Now coming on to our third topic that is the whiplash injury. In this section we will discuss what are the clinical whiplash injuries, what are the differential diagnosis, how the whiplash can be treated and what are the progress and outcomes of the chronic whiplash syndrome. What is a whiplash injury? If you see the diagram on the right side, this is the kind of a classical history of a whiplash injury. The impaction is from the back that the patient, for example, there was an RTA and a road traffic sign in which the car was hit from behind. And actually the patient initially was traveling at certain speed, had a hyperextension of the neck due to this impact because there was actually acceleration as when the car was hitting from the back. Then, and that kind of situation, there's a natural tendency to apply brakes to the car. So once the, that patient applies brakes, there's a deceleration and this hyperextension of the neck actually goes due to the deceleration to hyperflexion. And this hyperflexion actually produces a classical whiplash phenomena, which is it leads to ligamentous like sprains of the neck. So with the whiplash, there's the first hyperextension and then there's a hyperflexion injury of the cervical spine. Mostly involves the soft tissue sprains of the neck. And why? Because once it's hyperextending, the anterior sprains are at stretch. They may rupture, especially the anterior longitudinal ligament may be ruptured during the hyperextension injury. Once the patient goes into hyperflexion, then there may be knuckle ligaments and other spinous process and interspinous ligaments may get ruptured due to hyperflexion strain over the neck area. And once these ligament sprains are lost, there may be associated significant instability with the cervical spine, which may present with neurological compromise as well. And what's important is veritable uh, epidemic is there because usually it's most commonly associated with RTA. Somehow the women are affected more than the men because their uh, ligaments are more prone to injury as compared to men. And most commonly it's always the anterior longitudinal ligament of spine which is normal, which was most uh, tough ligament of the cervical spine. But once it gets lost, it produces a very significant amount of instability. And capsular fibers of the facial joints are also strained as well. There may be associated intervertebral disc damage once the neck goes into hyperflexion, this may also damage due to the hyperflexion of the intervertebral disc as well, especially the anterior part of the intervertebral disc. What would be the clinical features? Usually the patient complains of pain and stiffness in the neck within the 12 to 48 hours or several days later as well. Pain sometimes radiates to the shoulder and interscapular area. This may be because usually the spinal cord, uh, especially the C3, C4, C5 vertebra are mainly involved. On X-ray examination, there may be on the only finding would be loss of cervical lordosis, and we, uh, because there is instability at the ligamentous level, and actually muscles are in a spasm, so that to make the neck more stable, they are actually con continuously contracting, leading to spasm of muscle, which actually results in loss of cervical lordosis, and there is a straightening of cervical spine. MRI is usually not indicated except if there is associated significant neurological compromise. What else patient may present with the headache, there may be dizziness, blurring of vision as well. There could be paresthesias in the arm, especially for the C6, C7 and C8 area. There may be temporal mandible joint pain and discomfort, especially pain during the chewing. There could be tinnitus, neck muscles may be tender or there may be spasm and skew neck may also be visible on examination. If you see over here, instead of having this kind of a lordosis, you can see the straightening of the cervical spine. This signifies there is definitely severe muscle spasm. Mm -hmm. And a severe muscle spasm would be due to multiple other reasons as well. This could be due to UED, we have to build, um, there could be other vertebral fractures as well. There could be mid cervical subluxation as well. There could be disc lesion as well. There could be intervertebral uh, disc lesion such as herniation of the disc at the cervical level as well. So that is means there are different uh, differentials which you need to be uh, keep it in mind. And usually the whiplash injury is a diagnosis of exclusion. If all other are less likely, then most likely with a kind of a clinical history with the car was hit from the back. And most likely the patient complained that first neck went into hyperextension, then into hyperflexion. Most likely we can diagnose that most likely the patient has suffered from whiplash injury. So other seed belt injuries may be associated with as well, but not always. Sometimes the complete neck sprains, 
but not always and they do not always cause the bruising of the chest as well because you see seat milk or seat belt sign which is very much visible over the chest or abdomen are sometimes absent and they may these sudden decelerating injuries may only present with neck sprains only and they usually produce pressure on the traction injuries of suprascapular and or brachial plexus sometimes the symptoms are of uh, actually not truly the cervical spine injury but of the brachial plexus injury and due to the sudden stretching of one side of the body uh, uh, as compared to the other this may lead to a uh, brachial plexus injury over the one side and may be upset over the other side as well and there is a grading for whiplash associated injury which includes grade 0 is no neck symptoms or sign grade 1 is neck pain stiffness and tenderness with no physical signs grade 2 means neck symptoms such as pain muscle spasm and tenderness is there with musculoskeletal sign especially comes the muscle muscular part you now with grade 3 this pain stiffness comes with the neurological sign such as paresthesias numbness or uh, uh, other uh, symptoms with neck sense and with fractured or dislocation a ut grade 4 whiplash injury that is from what's important over here is that when we are looking at whiplash injury we need to determine whether the cervical spine is stable or not if it's not stable then we may need to do something about it but if the injury is not severe enough and it's not compromised stability of the cervical spine then it can be treated conservatively as well coming to the treatment simple the initial management simple pain relieving measures such as analgesics medication during first few weeks graded exercises and which is begins with isometric muscle contraction the postural adjustments we have to start with the physio and going on gradually to more active movements especially the lateral uh, movements of the cervical spine initially not done then gradually there is a flexion and extension exercises are started and lastly movements the, against the resistance so that the muscle power can be regained other associated uh, treatment include the osteopathic and chiropractic medicines have a role as well uh, in so that the cervical muscle spasm is actually relieved and patient feels better about it then there is another term called as whiplash associated disorder although it's a chronic term for uh, chronic whiplash injury and there may be associated insufficiency of anterior longitudinal ligament which may be associated with chronic whiplash syndrome absence there is absence of any objective clinical or imaging signs for example patient may not have much of a pain may not have much of a stiffness there may not be loss of cervical lordosis but patient may sometimes say there is i have some there was an injury and after that i have not actually felt good there is some always some degree of pain especially anteriorly may be associated with some restriction of movement but not always there may or may not be associated with loss of function which is important to know and sometimes it's only associated with depression and inability to work and if you see the x ray there absolutely defined the ct and mri may have, so no show sure, neurological compromise and associated problems so sometimes due to the uh, insufficiency of anterior longitudinal ligament once this results in a chronic whiplash syndrome as well in this section i have discussed the mainly the whiplash injury which is the very most common injury of the cervical spine ligamentous injuries it includes initially the, the trauma has actually the person is uh, going at a certain speed and suddenly his car uh, her car actually has been hit from the back this result in a sudden acceleration leading to hyperextension injuries when then when the that patient person applies brakes this lead to deceleration and leading to hyperflexion injury this phenomenon of first the hyperextension and then hyperflexion injury can be produces a whiplash injury which leads to the rupture of anterior longitudinal ligament which can be graded initially it can be treated with simple analgesics then with muscle strengthening exercise which initially include isometric contraction exercises on the then gradually the passive flex flexion extension and then eventually the strengthening exercises you rarely the surgery is required but so if it is associated with cervical spine instability surgery may be required as well thank you very much keep watching scardia.com